Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hello, to a pre-release discussion on Chevalier's. It's not going to be a full pre-release analysis, just a quick discussion. I'll try to get the most important information out of the way right now, for those of you that aren't interested in watching a full video about a four-star. So, first, how good do I think she is? She's on the weaker side. I think at C6, she's fine. Without C6, she's kind of underwhelming. Not great. We'll get into the why, but that, that, that's that's the main assessment overall. Build is kind of weird. Like, I think there are situations where you can build her for damage at C4+, plus, but even then, not necessarily, because you do kind of... Actually using the C4 takes a while to do, so in some teams, it's not going to be worth doing. And because of that, I think in a pretty decent amount of teams, you're going to end up just building her like HP, HP healing bonus, or maybe ER HP healing bonus. I don't know if the burst is actually worse, uh, worth using. Sets generally just gonna be noblesse, I think, and then you you, you go ER obviously. Uh, I don't think TOM works very well on her because it just doesn't last long enough. There's gonna be a situation where you can use it if you snapshot right after swapping into her, but overall it's kind of whatever. And then in terms of what team you're gonna use her in, I guess we we gotta talk a little bit more about the kit first. So basically, right, what she does is she's overload Nilo kinda, but not really. So where where Nilo has a team restriction that forces you into only using the elements for Bloom. And as a reward, you get a pretty huge buff to Bloom. Chevreuse has a team restriction that forces you into only the elements for Overload, but your reward doesn't buff Overload. It just makes the characters, both Electro and Pyro, deal more damage by shredding um, shredding Electro and Pyro resistance. And so while her teams do have the Overload reaction in it, they're not Overload focused teams, like Nilo teams are Bloom focused. It doesn't matter how often you trigger Overload, like stuff like that, that doesn't really matter because it's not buffing your overload damage past just, well, overload is power damage, so it, deal it deals more damage to enemies that have reduced power resistance. But yeah, you can get that with by swirling pyro, right? Anyways, that's gonna be her main place in those teams. The problem is, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, but the numbers on this just aren't really worth it. And it's kind of just like, ugh. At C6, you also gain 20% pyro damage and electro damage to any any characters that are healed by her skill up to three stacks so up to 60 percent now this buff is pretty big i mean okay this is a big buff but you need characters to reach a certain threshold to be worth putting in a team right if a character doesn't do anything then they're worse to have in a team than a character that does something so every character needs to do something this actually looking at her numbers and all that isn't really enough by itself but this plus the c6 can be enough in some situations that means that most of her teams are gonna be like they're, they're gonna revolve around this but because the c6 buff isn't actually reliant on the team restriction you can get that 60 percent damage bonus without needing only power on electro there's gonna be some teams that use her just you, you, that you just add her into a team but I, I do think like she's just mainly gonna see play in only power on electro teams now in terms of which characters can be used for that that's where the the the, the problem really lies because it's not just like hey is she doing more than an animal unit would in the slot i mean that there is obviously that but there's also the fact that right now people don't play overload teams a team that has only like electro and pyro characters and then maybe animal characters that she could replace isn't really a thing. The only one I can really think of is right on Hyper. And in that team, you don't really have pyro damage, right? It's mainly just right on damage. So the fact that you get both resistance shreds, because that, that's the main thing that she that she does, right? Is you get the pyro and electro res shred without having to do any complicated setups to get both, right? But in Raiden teams, you only care about the Electro Swirl, you don't care too much about the Pyro Swirl, which makes it so that you just don't gain that much from her in those teams. Now, her, her Ascension 4 gives you up to 40% attack, right? If you're building her like HP, 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 which is cool. It's 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 useful, it's nice, right? But again, right, like both of these things together without any constellations just aren't really enough to justify the slot. Even in the teams that already do kind of meet the prerequisites where you could replace her with an animal unit, which again, right, right now, is basically only Raiden. With the C6, I think it can be worth it, but then you start running into the biggest issue with her kit, which is the nature of Overload is that it knocks enemies away from you. That's what it does. And away from each other. And usually you can kind of alleviate that by having an animal unit to group them back up. You can't with her. If you put an animal unit on the team, 
you lose the only real reason to put her on the team. Which makes her basically only good in situations where you're against bosses that aren't affected by the knockback from Overload. That's basically it. So what sort of teams are you left with, right? C can she replace Bennett? I mean, not really. Assuming you don't have an animal unit, her buff is bigger than Bennett, but with Bennett, you can run an animal unit, right? So you could do something like, I mean, the, the, the default Raiden team for, for, for that is Raiden, Bennett, Kazuha, and then either Sarah or Official, right? If you were to slot her in, you'd probably, you'd have to like remove Kazuha, but then would you be able to remove Bennett and instead use a different Electro or Pyro unit for damage? I mean, not really. Her energy generation isn't like great. As far as I understand, her C4 that lets you use her your E multiple times has particle ICD. So you can't generate multiple sets of particles with it, right? So what else could you do? Okay, well, you could do maybe in, in Rational, right? There, there's Sing To, right? So you could replace Sing To with her. That That's probably fine. Now, the issue is Rational doesn't really have much empty time that you can really spend on her with Bennett buff so like with a c6 you're not really gonna or with a c4 you're not gonna get like a lot of damage on her and there's also the issue that like okay so the, the way that, that her e works right it's it when you trigger overload it buffs the e and it makes a deal more damage and after you use your e you get healing over time to the active character now this is only to the active character and her c6 which is the, the damage percent buff is only to characters that are healed by it and you also get a party-wide healing on, on on a portion of it but only at the end of the healing from the e and at that point you've already dealt most of your damage right which means that this is basically just a buff to the active character you can probably get one maybe two procs of it when you swap into channeling to snap all her stuff but you're not gonna get all three. Overall, right, th this is a pretty disappointing character to me. It focuses just on like talent values for your, your Electro and, and, and Pyro characters. She doesn't really do too much. Her healing is pretty bad. Like it's not, it can be enough by itself, but like it, it's, the numbers are are lower than Bennett and it's short, It's it's it happens every two seconds, not every second. So her healing is like a lot worse than Bennett's. And like Bennett also gives you such a big buff without the restriction that there's just I, I don't think she's gonna replace bennett in a lot of teams and in, in some you're gonna play play her with bennett but eh. back to like the uh, replacing thing so with her and rational it's I, I think it's something you can do but it's not something that's that great either because um i mean Sing so does a lot of damage in rational and channeling vaping is a pretty important portion of your team's dps you know like in rational Shanling does more damage than Raiden, assuming equal investment on both, and losing the vape is a pretty big deal, you know? I think it'll be pro like one of her most competitive options, but I still don't think it's gonna be very good without her constellations. I mean, it it'll be able to clear, because like, it's, I mean, you could clear with a three unit team of Raiden, Ben, and Shanling, right? It's just, it's Ben and Shanling. It is what it is, right? And like, it's gonna be able to clear, it's gonna be fine, but I'm not very excited for it. Like, if you really like her, you'll be able to make her work, but overall, it's just, we don't currently have the sort of teams that are focused on Electro and or Pyro units that struggle to slot in an animal unit and make it work well, right? That, that, that that's that's basically what the 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 issue with her with her kit is it's not that she's not good at what she does is that what she does isn't really useful for anyone right now the teams that use mostly power and electro units that we have right now are able to slot in animal units very easily now it's very very possible in my opinion it's very likely that the intent with her kit is to release a support ahead of time for a carry in the future. Maybe Clarine, maybe Arlequino, right? Th those are the, the two, I think, confirmed five stars that we know are gonna be coming in the next few months, next few patches, uh, that are Power and Electro. So what sort of kit would they need to have for her to be good with them? So. I mean, we, we can talk about them separately because the, a pyro kit and an electro kit would need different things to be able to work well with this. So let's talk about a bit, uh, like what an electro kit would need to have to work very well with this specifically. So the first thing is it would need to be a character that has really good personal damage, but also either like specifically in their kit, it says that they need overload in some way or has like really big synergy with, with specific pyro units. It would also need to be a character that can't really do efficient swirl setups. So 
What I mean by that is like, if you look at Sino, for example, if you're trying to play Sino as like a solo electro unit, because Sino has no form of off field uh, electro application, if you want to do a setup that swirls electro and pyro, well, you can't just use Sino E and then Bennett burst because that's going to remove your electro. You can't use Bennett burst and then Sino E because that's not going to actually apply electro as an aura, it's just going to remove the pyro. So you can maybe try, okay, well, I'll Bennett burst out of range of the enemy and then Sino E so that they have Electro on them. And then I can Swirl Electro and then from the, the self Pyro application, my, my Kazuha will also get a Pyro Absorption and then Swirl Pyro. Maybe I can just do Sino E and then Kazuha Burst and then Bennett, but then it can be kind of scuffed to actually get your Pyro Swirl. So the fact that you don't have off field Electro app makes it a lot more difficult to actually get a good double Swirl setup. Now, the reason why I don't think she would be all that great with Sino is because in Sino's case, you don't really want to run him as a solo Electro in a team like this because his ER requirements are too high. And if you run another Electro unit, then you can use that unit's Electro to get your Swirl. So for an Electro unit, it would have to either be something that like directly says that it needs overload, like Chevreuse herself, right? Her E without overload is, is 300 motion value and with overload is 500. Right, she gains 60% damage, 66% damage, just from you triggering overload. If it's not for that directly, I feel like it would have to be an, a non-energy hungry character that doesn't have a good for a good way to apply off-field electro for your setups, right? Because then you start needing too many steps to do your setups, and when you need too many steps to do your setups, that's a lot of time that you're not doing damage. And then that like reduces the value of these animal characters and increases the value of alternatives to those characters. So that, that, that would be like for an Electro character, the sort of kit that I'd expect that would synergize very well with her. For a Pyro character, it's a bit different. The main reason for it is Pyro Convey. Although I guess Dendro can, or sorry, Electro can, can aggravate. So it would still be relevant for that. So in, in Electro's case, it would have to be a character that doesn't apply Electro too often. So they wouldn't be able to get too many aggravate. In the Pyro character's case, it would have to be a character where their ICD doesn't line up to vape the big damage numbers and rather lines up to, to vape the small damage numbers. Seems like she's made for Yoimiya. The potential issue with that is if you've ever played Yoimiya with Overload on your team, where enemies are not like literally melee range, Yoimiya's sometimes relevant issue of missing shots is exacerbated significantly by Overload. That's not a problem against enemies that are not vulnerable to Overload, but that's not always the case. That being said though, like she could be pretty decent with, with Yoimiya. Right, you could use Yoimiya, Fischl, Bennett, Beto, maybe? Wait, no, that's that's four characters. Wait, you gave me official Bennett of hers. You could do. It doesn't have a shielder though, so it's a little scuffed. Beta official Yoimiya Shavlers. I mean, maybe a team where Kishi could replace Bennett. Maybe I could see it with Yoimiya specifically. Maybe, maybe with Klee. And but again, right? Like, if you don't have C6, those teams are just gonna be so much worse than if you do, right? But yeah, overall, right? I think with C6, she's a fine character that doesn't feel like she's designed around currently released characters but rather around potentially unreleased characters without c6 she's pretty bad i mean as usual right when, when i have negative thoughts on a character's uh, on a character before release i always hope i'm wrong right like i hope this character turns out not to be disappointing i i i, I hope i'm underestimating or, or missing something and i think that in her case it's more likely that i'm wrong than for a lot of other characters it's it's very very hard to evaluate the utility that animal units give you through grouping and it's hard for me to properly predict how teams that can't slot in animal units will perform overall but yeah as usual right i'll, I'll be testing her when she releases one thing i, I want to talk about though that because i've seen some people talk about it she can front load a pretty decent amount of damage with her c4 now the issue with that is i think people are severely underestimating the amount of time that it takes to do three shots right because that, that's what the c4 does right it lets you use your skill three times in a row but using your skill three times in a row is going to be like five seconds you have to make sure you re-trigger overload between each one otherwise your damage falls off a cliff and it's barely even worth using and it has an animation itself yeah it's it's yeah and yeah it's very similar to yai in terms of like the, the sort of field time that you need right okay yeah well, one thing that is worth mentioning i guess 
um, that, I, that I haven't mentioned yet. Her best case scenario is being used against enemies where you can't get a pyro aura, so you can't get a swirl to begin with, and that have an innate aura that is actually good for her. Not just like whatever, like it, it doesn't hurt her, but like actually helps her. And the upcoming Abyss, as far as I'm aware, has the Hydro Topa, which has an innate Hydro Aura, which means it's a lot harder to get a Pyro Swirl. And you're not losing Vape by not being able to run a Hydro unit. Your Pyro units can still Vape against the Tulpa. Which means that, uh, <laughs> funnily enough, right, even though I'm very, very negative on her, against the Tulpa, she's probably actually gonna be really good. You don't wanna run a Hydro unit against Tulpa. Not being able to run Animo is less of a downside. And so against those enemies specifically, unironically, this might be one of the best teams in the game, right? Like, you can run something like Hu Tao, Shengling, Chevreuse, Fischl, or even Yoimiya, Changling, Chevreuse, Fischl, or Raiden, Bennett, Changling, Chevreuse. Against Tulpa, she's gonna be really good. But it, it, it can be interesting to have units that are like specifically very good against specific enemies. I think if Genshin wasn't a gacha game, it would just be nice. It would be like really cool. It, for, it incentivizes team building diversity. But because it is a gacha game, you don't just have the units, you have to actually go for them. And is it worth actively going for a unit just for specific situations? I don't think so for most players. And so I think it's more important how she performs overall rather than against that specific really good matchup. But yeah, I guess the weapons also, just very quickly, uh, five. Cool, <laughs> weapons are done. <laughs> no, I mean, you can use five, you can use, if you don't have five or you don't have it available, you can use either of the craftables that gives you energy. You can use Katane or you can use the uh, new craftable polearm the rightful reward it gives you hp and energy i don't know how much i like this though because you don't really want to stay on her after you heal although with c4 plus you kind of do so it's fine there's gonna be situations where you can actually get two procs of this in which case at r5 that's 32 energy that's a lot uh, whereas cutane is what 15 energy but also minus three so 12 energy all right like in the right scenario the new weapon can give you more i think if you don't have if you don't have c6 it's not that great though because you're not going to get a second proc but if you do have c6 i think it's realistic to get a second prop from the c6 itself right it has it 12 seconds after you use your skill it also has a subset that's arguably more useful on her right it makes her healing better makes her attack buff bigger but yeah i, th I think that does it for, 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 for the for this discussion again right so, so summarize to, to summarize my thoughts i think without c6 she's barely even good in the good situations for her at c6 she's all right and she can be very strong in those specific matchups where running an animal unit or a hydro unit hurts you more than it helps so that, that's it right I, I i didn't feel like doing a full pre-release analysis because i don't think there's enough to say about her and i don't think there's enough <laughs> i don't think there's much analysis to do which is why i didn't do the uh usual format i figured i i, I should get a video out because it's better than not let me know what you guys think about a format like this and i'll see you guys in the next one bye youtube